Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, welcome once more to another video podcast of Political News Time, brought to you by yours truly of the PNT Live Network. And remember, if you want to check out archives of this podcast, all you got to do is subscribe to the YouTube channels that are associated with it. And you can find links to that over on politicalnewstime.com. So I hope all of you are having a good weekend. Have I been super productive this weekend? Yes and no. There was something I needed to get around to doing today that I did not get around to doing, but I am just about caught up with my video editing for my podcast, which is great. Well, the podcast that I just got uploaded, which was not last night, it was the day before yesterday, had to do with Kanye West and his run for the 2020 presidency he announced it and i think he's going to move forward with it i would be shocked if he didn't move forward simply due to the um obama element in something that obama said about kanye not too long ago kanye not too different from trump has a certain kind of um ego to where it's like if you tell those men hey i think this or that of you they're going to um, turn it back around on you. So I think it would be wonderful, actually, to have Kanye West as president. I'm going to hold him to him making Wakanda a reality, or at least implementing um, aspects of the fictitious nation of Wakanda into America. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight. I want to talk about um, how so many elements of fantasy specifically Disney but you know Wakanda Wakanda has to do with the uh, Marvel comics but Marvel comics nowadays is a property of Disney but so many Disney elements um, that we grew up with have shaped our political views and how the world works how we view each other in society that's what I want to talk about tonight because it's you, you know for him to have referenced Wakanda he really hit home with pretty much every African American because we all went to see it. I actually had a video that went viral um, that I either deleted or I um, privatized in regards to my initial reaction to the Black Panther movie because initially I didn't like it. And the reason I didn't like it had to do with me feeling like the movie wasn't for me. I felt like it was for Africans not African Americans and I really didn't like the way that um, Killmonger the African American was regarded by his African half brother the Black Panther because he was seen as being a um, half breed but I suppose my negativity towards you, you know that element of the movie had to do with me feeling a bit lost and me wanting there to be a Wakanda. You know, why can't there be a damn Wakanda? Why can't there be black world? But is that being a black supremacist to want there to be a black world? Some would argue and say, yeah, it is. But you know, people of European descent, they have their world, Europe, I guess you could say, well, hey, Alexandra, there is Africa, but I want there to be a Wakanda in the Africa or maybe in America. Maybe America could become Wakanda (laughs) or maybe we'll get our own planet. Maybe that's why Kanye is teamed up with Elon Musk, because maybe Elon Musk is going to use his space program to create some giant spaceships for us to find another Earth. And that could be Wakanda you know for the black people and maybe other people want a planet too I don't know but anyway getting back to how Disney ties into all this um simply by not Elon by Kanye mentioning Wakanda that resonated with pretty much anyone who saw that movie because that movie did brainwash all of us to a certain extent and it's, it's gonna stick in our minds every time we look at Kanye West from this point on and we think to ourselves, hmm, would he be a good president? We're all going to think to ourselves, well, maybe he secretly is the Black Panther. You know? <laughs> so, 
you know, that's 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 how, you know, Disney has been incredibly instrumental when it comes to how um, we view our political leaders and various people in society. Um, Kim Kardashian. OK, Kim Kardashian is popular for a myriad of reasons. But who does Kim Kardashian remind a lot of people of? Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Many of the women in that family do. All the little girls grew up watching Princess Jasmine and Aladdin. They look at Kim Kardashian, Kardashian, Jasmine. Yeah, you, you know, kind of rolls off the tongue in a similar fashion. But um, that helped to aid in her popularity. It did. Elon Musk, it's very interesting that he's being brought into the political equation at this phase because I'm going to tell you who I think Elon Musk actually is. I was saying the night before last that um, I'm not sure he's of this world. Maybe he's an alien because I don't recall hearing about Elon Musk when I was younger. But um, actually, I think I was familiarized with Elon Musk when I was younger via Disney. I don't think Elon Musk is an alien. I think he may be the clone of an individual named Werner Von Braun. Some of you out there know who that is. He was actually very instrumental when it came to creating Disney's Tomorrowland. Von Braun and his team were allowed entry into the United States and were expunged of their Nazi connections. This cleared the way for them to start working with the American government on their advancement of rocketry, a decision that came with enormous controversy. That controversy partly faded away with time, and in 1952, Walt Disney entered the picture. Walt Disney was very good at using film and television to increase public interest in certain topics, which was exactly what Von Braun was trying to do for space exploration. Together, they teamed up on creating three television programs, Man in Space, Man on the Moon, and Mars and Beyond. Disney and his studio served as the artists and animators behind the shows, while Von Braun served as technical director. Von Braun actually appeared in these episodes, which focused on explaining how manned space travel to the moon and beyond was actually possible. Even though we now have the theoretical knowledge to make a trip to the moon, it will be many years yet before our plans can fully materialize. However, let us imagine for a moment that the many problems have been solved and that after completing our space station, we are ready to begin our first voyage around the moon. With over 42 million viewers in the first episode alone, there is little doubt that Disney and Von Braun helped to ignite the American public's fascination with space travel. A few years later, Von Braun would go on to achieve his lifelong dream. While he didn't ever personally travel through space on one of his rockets, he oversaw the development of the Saturn V, the rocket that landed man on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm not sure what position he held with NASA, but he helped to build NASA. And now you have his look-alike today, Elon Musk, with SpaceX. And you have Kanye West about, run, about to run for president, saying, oh yeah, I think I would um, name Elon to be the head of the space program. Coincidence? Uh-uh. No, it's all planned. All planned. But um, there's, there's even a, um, you know, when I edit this, I'll put in the picture. There's a photograph of Elon Musk that is very popular to where he's standing holding a little model of a spaceship in almost the, the exact same stance and position that Werner von Braun was. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to Disney's influence, when it comes to politics, Nowadays, we are kind of going back to separatism and segregation becoming a bit normalized. The ideals of it, at least, the ideas. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I don't really know. What I do know is that integration to a certain extent led to many people such as myself not ever properly developing a sense of self, having low self-esteem, 
not ever feeling good enough due to not growing up around people who would essentially be our family, our, our peers. I did not grow up around other black people and I don't think that was good for my psyche. I'm not saying that everybody who grew up removed from others who would be considered their ethnicity feel the way that I do. I'm sure other people feel the opposite or differently or maybe they're well adjusted. But with me, I think it, it was a problem. With my parents, integration was great for them. They were happy with it. In no way, shape or form did, are my parents complaining. I don't even, I don't think my sibling um, has a problem with it. I might be the only one, but I'm just sharing how I feel. But anyway, I think Disney is normalizing separatism and segregation via quite a few of their movies. Like I said, the Black Panther created this fantastic idea in many African Americans' minds of there being a place, a, a country, a nation just for us to where it's high technology and to where, you, you know, we could just live and thrive and be happy and you know other people could come to visit Wakanda but it's for us for me I'm queen there Queen Alexandra of Wakanda that's my fantasy but um let's look at Thor Asgard Asgard was basically white nationalist world think about it they did have one black guy there and they had an asian guy too they had heimdall who was the gatekeeper of the rainbow bridge he was black maybe he was on loan from wakanda i wonder what his backstory is i've never read it but they had an asian guy and then they had um the frost giants from the frozen world i can't remember the name of that planet I, and, and that was a little, I, I thought that was a little racist, actually, because I, I felt like they tried to kind of in a veiled way um, link the Frost Giants possibly to the Jewish people. If you watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I think that they did. I think that was a little bit racist, actually. But... That's what Thor is about. Thor is about the Viking. You know, he's he's super white man of the world. He has his hammer. Put down my hammer on you. What's that girl's name who, um, th that little girl who plays love interest. She kind of did have an Anne Frank kind of look. <laughs> I'm not the only one saying this. Don't get mad. But, um... Yeah, so that was White Supremacist World. Actually, when I think about that, has Marvel Comics ever had a um, Asian superhero? East Asian? Or um, even a um, Middle Eastern one? I don't think so. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I don't think that they have. They should, they should have that for them. But, um, yeah. I mean, we all grew up watching the little mermaid and cinderella snow white that brainwashed us all into just kind of accepting people of european descent as being the leaders and kings and queens at least within america and wherever they have disney but disney is everywhere they they translate those movies into every single language i mean disney is such a powerful brainwashing tool when it comes to ethnicity that it, it's incredible it, it really is when you when you think about it oh remember that frog princess movie that came out did, did when did that come out did that come out before obama became president or after let's see 2009 it came out after obama and they put that out to um basically at least from my perspective make it known to american children that michelle obama's the princess respect her she's the princess 
And when you look at that frog, actually, the way they have that frog smiling, it had like a really big smile. I wonder if that frog was modeled after Barack's face. Because the way that frog smile, when, when he turns into a prince, that's not how Barack looks. He wishes he looked that good, even though it's a cartoon. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. So that's what I want to talk about tonight. <laughs> <laughs>